It's time for This Week in WordPress, episode number 230, entitled Shorter This Week. It was recorded on Monday, the 13th of November, 2022. My name's Nathan Wrigley, and I'll be joined by my co hosts. I've got Kathy Zant, and I've got Nev Harris, and also Zach Tyrrell. We're going to be talking about WordPress, but what are we going to be talking about specifically, I hear you ask? Well, first stop, WordPress 6.1 has a new theme. It's called 2023, and one of the nice new innovations is the variations which you can use. So we talk about those and how you can implement those. Are they the full Monty? Perhaps not just yet, but they're certainly a nice addition. WordPress's full site editing is getting a bit of a rebrand, perhaps less confusingly from now on. It's going to be called Site Editor. WooCommerce store owners have got lots of problems at the moment with fake, fraudulent Stripe charges. Why is this happening and why is it costing people money? There's a couple of meetup courses on this week. They're both about blocks. One is using the navigation block and the other is about using development tools without React to create blocks of your own. Sabrina Zidane is trying to get to WordCamp Europe and we're trying to help her achieve that goal. There is also some tools on the market this week. There's a whole suite of tools by Affinity for all different platforms and they're on really affordable pricing. And Pro Writing Aid has also got a tool. It's a bit like Grammarly, but it's a full on lifetime deal. It's all coming up next on This Week in WordPress. This episode of the WP Builds podcast is brought to you by GoDaddy Pro, the home of managed WordPress hosting that includes free domain, SSL, and 24 seven support. Bundle that with the hub by GoDaddy Pro to unlock more free benefits to manage multiple sites in one place, invoice clients, and get 30% off new purchases. Find out more at go.me forward slash WP Builds. Hello, 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 hello. This week in WordPress, we're on episode number, I don't know, a lot. And this <laughs> week, we are joined by three lovely guests. First of all, we've got uh, back for, well, probably, I'm going to guess, Kathy, maybe like the 10th or 12th or 15th time. Feels like that's something like that. Always a pleasure to have you back. How are you doing, Kathy? I'm doing very well. Good to see you again. Yeah, thank you. Kathy is a, a podcast, sorry, a product manager, product marketing manager for Cadence um, at iThemes at Stella WP. She helps organize both WordCamp Phoenix and WordCamp US. Did you, um, do you have plans for WordCamp Phoenix for the forthcoming year or has that all been put on ice? It, I'm no longer in Phoenix, so I don't get the joy of uh, organizing, but I'm wearing my WordCamp Phoenix shirt. Oh, nice. <laughs> the last one. So I'm like, I'm all ready. I'm <laughs> sunny now. I miss people. Oh. Well, I appreciate you joining us once more. Really, really appreciate it. We're also joined, as you can see. I don't know, Nev. Nev, is this the first time you've been on this particular show? I, I've forgotten. I can't remember. I'm sorry. It is. Oh, okay. That's good. <laughs> In that case, I don't feel quite so bad. How are you doing, Nev? I'm doing fantabulous. Good. Nev is, um, Nev. well, Nev helps um, digital business owners find the profit hidden in their businesses. He is also one of, uh, sorry, he also is the one on the media call when they talk to, when they want to talk about finance without putting their audience to sleep. Uh, is, is finance and biz dev your thing then? It's not really my thing, never has been, but that's your bag, <laughs> is it? Yes, 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 yes. Um, I, I owned an agency for, for like eight years, but then I just transitioned to this a couple of years back. So you, uh, you look like you might be in a northern part of the United States because of what's behind you. I can see it's sort of like an autumnal scene. The, uh, the leaves <laughs> have fallen off. Where, where exactly are you? I'm in, I'm, I'm in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, freezing my butt off right now. <laughs> oh. Well, for, for one of the one of the, I don't know if there are any upsides to global warming, but at the least at the minute in the UK, uh, typically by now it would be ridiculously cold. But I've, I mean, oh, I went out yesterday for a walk with my son, and I was in a t-shirt, and uh, kind of thinking, this is this is not normal. 
Anyway, it's not a podcast about the environment, so we'll quickly press on. <laughs> uh, and last, but by no means least, definitely for the first time, I'm joined by uh, Zach Tyrrell. How are you doing, Zach? I'm good. How are you? Yeah, Zach, I, I don't know if it's just me, but your audio was very choppy there. Did Kathy and Nev have the same experience? Yeah. So, uh, Zach, I'll just do an introduction for you, and let's see if we can figure that out as the show sort of progresses. Yeah, a bit of a head scratch. Um Anyway, Zach Tyrrell is the general manager at LearnDash, the events calendar, and Restrict Content Pro, which are all Stella WP at Liquid Web Brands. So uh, let's have a let's have another go. How are you doing, Zach? See if you've managed to fix your stuff. No, no, it's totally silent. Um, just apologies for those people watching, but just for Zach, if you go to beneath the picture, the, the larger picture with all four of us in, there's a little cogwheel, and if you click on the cogwheel. Um, have a little f find the audio sections and see if there's anything in there which is a surprise switch it on or off and then we've got the private chat Zach as well which we can use during the show if you want to update us on anything feel free to do that as well a couple of um, couple of people joining us already it's very nice to have you with us we've always got Rob Cairns thank you Rob for joining us uh, and he says hi Kathy Nev, Zach, and yeah, and Nathan too. Thank you very morning. Uh, so thank you very morning. Thank you very much. And we're also joined by Peter, Peter from Connecticut, Chile. He says that's what it's like over there. And Michelle Frechette, four of my favourite. Oh, four of my favourite people. She said, "Yeah, thank you." And just down the road from me, we've got Elliot Sowersby as well. Courtney Robertson's popped in to say hi. And so is my long car as well. This is very nice. How's it going there, Zach? Any joy with fiddling with your audio? Still no, crack? No. Fully? Yeah, it, it's very, um, it's basically non-existent. Uh, there was a moment there where we, I had, think you said the word crackly, but aside from that, I didn't <laughs> want to hear anything. Uh, what we'll do, um, Zach, we can't, I, regrettably, I can't probably spend too much time troubleshooting it because we're going to crack on. But we'll, I'll come to you, and if you at some point feel that the endeavor is not worth your time anymore, feel free to free feel free to drop out if your audio is just, a, you know, it's basically not working. But stick with us for a bit, and we'll see if we can see if we can get you on. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so let's just do a few little bits of self promotion first, if that's all right. This is WP Builds. You can see at the bottom there. This year round, we're sponsored by GoDaddy Pro. Thanks to them for keeping us keeping the lights on over at WP Builds. Very much appreciated. We also, uh, you can see at the top here, we have a Black Friday deals page, which you can find here. If you go to wpbuilds.com forward slash black, you're going to be able to find this particular page. And at the moment, I think we've got about 130 deals on there, something like this. We've been kindly sponsored by GoDaddy, WS Forms, Stella, WP, as well as Gravity Forms. They also keep in the lights on at this page. But it's searchable, filterable. Like I said, there's about 130 deals on there at the moment. And if you just click this button, you can sort of drill down into how much they're saved. And you know, if you know the name of something, you can type it in there and so on and so forth. So maybe go and check that out. Book a market for your Black Friday deals. The other thing to mention is we're doing a silly award. We do this. This is the second year we've done it. And last year, I think we raised a little bit of money. Maybe Michelle Frechette, I think you said it was about a thousand bucks for Big Orange Heart. The whole point of this deals page, it's at, sorry, this awards page, it's at wpbuilds.com forward slash awards. It's just ridiculous. You give $20 to Big Orange Heart, send me a screenshot of the receipt, and then I'll stick you on here and you can win whatever category it is. So wpbuild.com forward slash awards. And uh, I'm just going to put this across your bows as well. If you're interested in stepping away, no, that's the wrong word. If you're interested in trying out Mastodon, um, you've probably heard a lot about Mastodon in the last, I don't know, couple of weeks. Lots of people seem to be experimenting with it as an alternative to Twitter. Uh, we've had an instance going for a, nearly two years now, I think, and you feel free to join us over there. It's at wpbuilds.social. So the URL is on the screen. It's at wpbuilds.social. And the idea really is that it's a federated network of loads of different instances of Mastodon and spreads the load. So rather than one giant service like Twitter, which needs to make tons of money to keep going, 
This is a federated thing. Lots and lots of little instances build up to the whole network. And uh, yeah, it's totally free to use. WPBuilds.social. Give it a go. And uh, here's Zach again. I've noticed you've just sort of dropped out the call and come back in again. So let's, should we give that a try, Zach? Let's see if we can get your mic going now. He's on a different computer, I think, now. Hey, Zach, can you hear us? Any, any luck at this point? Yeah, that seems to be crystal clear this time. I don't know what the what the gremlin was there, but we seem to have fixed it. So that's great. And well, sorry uh, about you, that. No, no, feel fine. We all work in tech. We know how this goes. Uh, <laughs> unexpected things happen, especially with audio. It seems it feels like audio is the thing which always goes wrong. Video always seems to be much more reliable. It seems to be everybody's audio. Anyway, we haven't actually got into the nuts and the bolts of the WordPress news yet. So let's start that now. Uh, last week, WordPress 6.1 dropped. We had Jonathan De Rosiers on talking all about it, which was really nice, given that he was the lead. Um, this week, we're going to be talking about the, the theme which shipped with it, because we didn't really have time for it last week. It's called 2023, even though we're not quite there yet. Um, and it's a real departure from previous WordPress themes, because this one, rather than basically being, here's the theme, one size fits all, They've taken a really different approach this year, and I'm just going to quickly scoot to a different article, which is this one. This is over on uh, the WordPress.org article. It's um, all about this. And you can see all of the different bits and pieces, but this is the bit that kind of is of interest to me. Uh, all of these different style variations that you can use. So it's basically 10 website themes within one. That's really a bit of an exaggeration. You know, it's not like each of these is tremendously different from all the other ones. But if we have a look over on this site, you can see this is a, an article by Channing uh, Ritter. It shows how you might have your WordPress website. And uh, simply all that you do is you go down the menu on the left and you, you just try out these 10 different variations. I think they had multiple more than 10 submitted and they finally coalesced on 10. Uh, it's not not say these are the best or the worst or whatever, but these are the ones that just sort of broadly demonstrated the capabilities. And uh, you can sort of see what they look like. So here's the first one. That's what you would get uh, with that one. And then let's have a look at some of the others. Look how different that is. That's so, so remarkably different. There's a whole load of other stuff, but let's just dwell on this. What do you, what do you make of this attitude towards theming from now on? I love it. It reminds me a lot of the starter template plugin that Cadence has, where you can right. pick a starter template and then you can choose your colors and fonts. So this, you know, built right into a core theme is really cool to see um, being able to really take a theme and start customizing it just as you're as you're getting started. I think it's really cool. Yeah, really interesting. Um, also, the, uh, the sort of the way that you do it, as we just described, I think the friction to it is pretty low. You've just got these style icons at the right. They don't really give much away. And so each time you click on one, there is a bit of a visual shock. It's like, oh, okay, it's not just about the colors, but CSS around borders and paddings of images and fonts and so on as well. So there's a little bit more behind the scenes. But I just think this is a really, yeah, interesting way. So I'll let Nev and uh, Zach have their take on it if they want. I think you hit the nail on the head where it's about reducing friction. So make it easier for somebody just, you know, that's maybe newer to WordPress or like checking out WordPress to uh, jump right in and be able to, with, with the menus there, not having to reinstall or change something on the ground, just be able to click, click, click and see how things change. I think it's brilliant. Uh, to me, it feels like a good first step uh, in moving in this direction, but it, it feels like somewhere that's the beginning of a journey and, and not mm. the end. Uh, it's still a lot of, um, you know, colors are make a huge difference. Typeface makes a huge difference. But I think until themes also are, are giving us options for different layouts and those kinds of things, we won't really see kind of the power. Because as an end customer, I'd be, I, I obviously react to the, the text and some of those things, but uh, it's still fundamentally the same layout, right? And so I, I think that, uh, I think it's great. I really like it, but I, I think 2024 will, hopefully go one step further, you know, with things like block patterns and, uh, you know, the power we get from the full site editor. I, this feels like the beginning of a story. 
Yeah, I guess you um, you hit the nail on the head, Cathy. You, you know, Cadence and other tools have had the ability to sort of stare at a whole variety of different templates, but they're not bound by the same layout, which obviously this is constrained by. You you, you picked it up perfectly, didn't you, Zach? Every single layout that I'm clicking on and enlarging is is identical. You know, you've got a lovely big masthead image followed by what is presumably the H1 here, and then you've got three blog posts with the associated typography underneath. And you know, we go on to the next page, and it's the same. And what we are, what we are basically doing is changing bar margins, padding, text, background color, and so on and so forth. But it does mm -hmm. feel, like you said, like the beginning of a journey. And if if this could be a bit more like the offerings of Cadence, where I don't know, you might have a, a real estate version of it, or you might have a, I don't know, a WooCommerce version of it, or a blog version of it, then yeah, that would be nice to see in the future. I like it. Okay, let's go to the, let's go have a quick look at some of the other bits and pieces. Sorry, I'm flitting around these articles. So in the nice new theme, we obviously had the, the bits that we've just mentioned. We've got those, uh, uh, we've got the different style variations. So we've also got a whole variety of new block patterns as well. And there's some various other bits and pieces that you can fiddle with in terms of editing. And I, I won't go into it. But if you've, if you've got a new version of WordPress 6.1, go and have a play with 2023. It's just fun to get, waste 20 minutes clicking on all the buttons and see, see what you get. It's really nice. Okie dokie. Let's move over to here. I, I don't know if this is even a new story, but it's kind of interesting, I suppose, in the same way that whenever you hear about a rebrand of something, it can be quite interesting. We've had full site editing now for, ooh, I don't know, 18 months or something along those lines. I can't exactly remember. Um, and everybody's been calling it FSE. And a little while ago, Josepha um, Hayden Chomposi, who is the executive director of the WordPress project, she raised the subject that she thought the name was a little bit confusing. Um, and so she proposed that we ought to change it to something different. So she put out her tendrils and got some information back from the community. And in the future, it's now just going to be called Site Editor or Site Editing, I guess. A um, couple of reasons for that. The first one is it was the most popular choice. That's one thing. Good to have a de democratic decision of those people who contributed an answer but also apparently um in terms of internationalization that term is e really easy to hook into with a whole variety of different languages and i'll quote um there was broad support for site editor particularly from the polyglot community as the term translates most effect as this term translates most effectively into hundreds of different languages so i guess site editor you can just use a two two words string in almost any language and it gives you sort of the same feeling of what's going on. So I don't know if that's of, of importance to you. I'll probably be saying full site editing by default for the next year or so and tripping myself up, but there we go. Hey, I'll hand it over if you've got anything to add, confusing or otherwise. I love seeing, you know, that consideration of the multilingual international sort of angle to the whole thing. I, I really appreciate them keeping that in mind. Hmm. Yeah, I think it. I think it just makes more sense because full site editing. Yeah, hmm. How to describe it? Firstly, you've always been able to do full site editing. It wasn't really like a new feature. If you had the, if you had the, the technical skills to edit anything, you you could you could have done that for the longest period of time. So I guess site editor you know, gives a bit more of an impression of actually what's going on because the UI for that certainly doesn't do the full Monty just yet. Anyway. I like that it's simple. simple. Um, it's it, It'll be important as I've been teaching my daughter how to use WordPress, like the customizer has really like thrown her. She's like oh. in the customizer. And so she sees the sidebar and then she sees the site. And so she's trying to click on the site and she's like, I'm trying to customize it because it, that's what it means in her, right. her mind, right? So I, as long as we're using site editor within the WP admin, that we're actually like, if you're in the site editor, that you're editing the site, that as long as it like intuitively makes sense. So I don't have to explain another thing to my 14 year old, I'm all for it. <laughs> can, I ask you, can I ask you about that? Because during the pandemic, right at the beginning of lockdown, I decided to teach my uh, three children all at the same time, because they were all off school. And um, and the schools hadn't figured out 
you know, homeschooling or anything. So a lot of it in the first weeks was left up to us. So I thought I would uh, boldly teach them all how to use WordPress. And they found things like the customizer fairly straightforward. And then more recently, I went and tried to, I tried to show, <laughs> tried to show them full site editing there was just general pandemonium. They, they really didn't get it and they couldn't understand, okay, if I click on this, now where's the thing? They got used to the customizer. So it was the one source of truth for all the themey things. And although it was a bit of a faff remembering where to go back to and then which sub menu and parent menu to go back to for all of the different things, in the end, they got it. And they've now sort of, their, their brain has atrophied onto that's how it is. So now the move to full site editing is now an impossible for them and they don't want anything to do with it. So I'm curious, your 14 year old daughter, has she only been shown, like was she primarily shown the full site editing capabilities? Oh, no, I didn't go there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't even make it that yeah, far. You, you wait basically, till you do that. In that case. <laughs> <laughs> I basically just gave her a site and said, okay, get started. Here's the customizer. Get, start getting started setting it up. And then she, I didn't give her much direction. I, I wanted her to figure it out and then I'd help her along the way. So I didn't like give her any in instruction, but it was kind of an interesting process to watch her intuitively pick up things in certain ways that I would have never, you know, I'm, I'm, I grew up with WordPress, so I just know how things work, but I wanted to see how someone who is just completely fresh thrown into the deep end, how it, I mean, she immediately installs a cadence starter template and, oh, this is Wix for WordPress. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> Which is right. hilarious to me too, because she's on, you know, Instagram and whatever. And so she's seeing all the ads. And so she's got this mindset. So it was really interesting to me to just like throw her in and see how it worked. But yeah, the customizer, she saw the site in one panel in one frame and then the customizer in the other. And then, wanted to get in there and start customizing it and editing it like you know with the back right okay. so yeah yeah because i've been using it for long a long period of time i've made the mental break that okay i can't actually add it the, edit the text over on the right i'm just here to edit the way things look but yeah okay that's an interesting point we have a comment from uh, k hello k i don't think we've had you on the show before so very nice Always nice to have somebody for the first time. Uh, she says, I like site editor. It's very clear. Full site editing sometimes confuses. And that raised in my head, if, if I go to see a, a, a client and I say, right, we're about to enter the full site editing interface, that's what, nowhere near as clear as this is the site editor. Click that button and we'll be going into the site editor mode, which I guess... I guess is a lot clearer. So thank you. And Peter says the editor, the block editor is still called Gutenberg by many, even by top WP folks. I prefer site editor, but FSE will be around for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so anybody new to WordPress, what we're going to have is the customizer, Gutenberg, full site editing and site editor, all kind of overlapping for like the next 18 months until finally we can uh, we can expunge all the terms which we don't need anymore. And that was kind of part of this as well, the, the article that Sarah Gooding wrote on the WP Tavern. Part of that was to give um, Josepha a chance to say, look, if you're if you're in the business of uh, working with WordPress and your clients need to know about this, start, start changing your documentation over. Make the change now. Get rid of all instances where it says full site editing and let's take this on as a, as a whole community. Nev, anything to add before we move on? I think it's a great step in the right direction with WordPress uh, clearing up their terminology and around just uh, everything like that, making it simpler for the average person that's not in it every day to understand what's going on, e even in terms like security vulnerabilities. I mean, true, that's an industry term, but you know, I think that's scary to some people that aren't involved in uh, WordPress all the time. So yeah. I think WordPress could do that. It's funny, isn't it? Because we, we live in, all four of us basically probably live in this total echo chamber where realistically it doesn't really matter if we change it from full site editing to site editor. You you know what that means. But if you're, if you're brand new to WordPress, the nomenclature of site editor does seem a little bit easier. And I know it's a trifling thing and it's a bit of a triviality, but maybe it'll just add to simplicity. Um, so anyway, if you've got a product or service or whatever, clients that are using anything to do with full site editing, start swapping over that documentation over to site editor from now on. Um, 
Now, I confess, I don't really understand this article, but I'm going to raise it anyway, because I, I don't really have a, a WooCommerce store or anything like that. I use Stripe from time to time, but usually it's to get a direct payment from somebody um, into my bank account, and so I'm expecting it to come in. But this article that I read this week, again on the Tavern by uh, Sarah Gooding, this this re- it's one of those moments where you really feel the pain of store owners, WooCommerce store owners. And I'll, I'll try to paraphrase it. If anybody sees me slip up or hears me say the wrong thing, please just jump in and correct me. It's called WooCommerce store owners combat fraudulent stripe charges. Okay. And it seems that over the past few weeks, um, advanced, the, well, this has been raised in the advanced WordPress Facebook group. They've been discussing the fact that there is a method out there where you can fraudulently uh, put through Stripe payments. Uh, so imagine like WooCommerce and so on. Um, and y- it typically, it would appear that these are very small charges, so something along the lines of $2.99. And one of the contributors to the conversation, whose name is John Brown, said that he's got five websites and he's tried all sorts of ways to combat this problem. He's put up Capture and they've got, Cloudflare on there and it's in the under attack mode. But one of the the clients has had, I don't know if it's one client or a combination of all five clients, 1,200, say that again, 1,200 transactions going through at $2.99. Uh, 100,000 similar transactions have been blocked. Nevertheless, it's still quite a lot going through. And the the dispute costs and the refund costs is going to be somewhere in the region of basically, let's call it two thousand um, dollars, one thousand nine hundred and forty, I think he said, which has got to be dealt with either by the store owner or maybe it's John himself. I'm not really sure, but the the point being, that's an insane amount of money for something that is just allegedly fraud. And it does make me wonder how is this even possible? I thought the promise of signing up to something like Stripe was that you would be protected by them, but apparently not. You know, if this if the charge goes through successfully and they say, yeah, this is legit, our systems indicate that this is legit, you are then eligible for, sorry, you are then on the hook for a, a small proportion of the refund cost. I believe, is it 40 US cents per, per refund or dispute, whatever it may be? Anyway, the point is, this is happening. It's in the wild. There are a whole load of suggestions for different ways that you might tackle it. But um, many of them seem like fairly blunt instruments. You are hitting a knot with a hammer. Um, And it's things like, you know, throttling the amount of transactions that can go through your WooCommerce store per hour, blocking whole countries, blocking IP ranges, all of this kind of thing. None of it's ideal, but any of you WooCommerce people, any of you three sort of understand this a little bit more or even just have some sort of commentary on how shocking this must be? I don't know as I understand it more, but we've uh, we've had a similar thing happening uh, since we launched Learn Dash Cloud Edition, which comes in at a lower price point, right? It comes in at twenty nine instead of these hundred dollar kind of products, and so we've had pretty continual fraud attempts against that ever since it went live. Um, you know, maybe fifteen twenty a week of those coming through. Oh. So it's, it's been it's been a little bit of a, a game of whack a mole, uh, and like you said, I mean we. We block IP ranges, and we have turned up our our you know fraud uh, indicate. I don't know exactly what it's called, but there's like a threshold that says this is when it indicates as fraud up front. So we've been playing with it. We've gotten it, it's gotten a little bit better, but it's definitely been something we've been chasing. So in that intervening period, so you say it was sort of fifteen. So that still to me is a galling amount of just utterly wasted money. You know whether it's a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, it's. You know, it's not going to break the bank, but it, in in a sense, it's money that is just totally going down the sewer. There's no point to, in spending that. And so, Zach, is this basically that stolen stolen credit card numbers, or just attempts at random strings of credit card numbers, or something like that, have been put through? I Stripe doesn't. Sorry. I assume it's stolen because they have addresses, right? Yeah. They have information to fill out on the credit card form, so it's got to be stolen. Uh, and one of the things we were able to do is instead of having to incur the, you know, forty dollar dispute charge for everyone, we were able to identify a pattern and say, okay, well, we already know these twenty are fraudulent. Like, well, 
we maybe have gotten a dispute on one, but we'll just be proactive on the other 19 and cancel all those orders, refund all those orders. And now we're paying the 40 cents instead of the $15 dispute fee. So yes. we're, we're able to get a, in front of them. You know, if we had 1200 of them, I don't know how, <laughs> how proactive we might've been able to be, but we also probably would have noticed really quickly because the volume's not that high, but yeah. Yeah. Yes. And I guess that would speak, you know, that, that the volume is really important, isn't it? If you've got a shop where there are several thousand transactions going through per day, it's going to be very difficult to spot. Okay, so we've had 10,000 orders today instead of 9,000. Well, it's the run up to Christmas, you know, that could be legit. Going through them all one by one, you, you know, you're wasting money on staffing, all of that kind of thing. And you're right. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I failed to point out that the dispute charge. So once the transaction has been sort of authorized, the, the dispute charge is 15 bucks, which is just, you know, on a thousand of them, it's a lot of money. Um, whereas if you can turn it simply into a refund, you're looking at 40 uh, cents, which you know, is still something. But um, Yeah, and, and just in general, running a store, it's so frustrating when uh, we have and I think probably most WordPress businesses have a really flexible refund policy. We're happy yeah. to refund someone's yeah. order. <laughs> Never happy to pay the $15 dispute charge when, when I'd much rather pay 40 cents for the transaction. Well, I guess I guess the other thing is because it's digital goods, you, you haven't sort of lost a thing. You know, you haven't, there's no physical commodity which needs to be brought back to you. Whereas if it was, I don't know, slippers or sandals or all the things for Christmas that comes in boxes, this is a really different story. Uh, you know, you've got to somehow get, wrestle those things back out of the, uh, um, the, the clutches of whoever's got them, you know, presuming that the addresses have been faked to something that, uh, you know, you can actually take delivery of it. I don't really know. The thing that, I find quirky is what, why is this even happening? What do the, is it that they're just trying to amass a whole load of free digital goods? Is that the point or is it just let's do it just because we can cause chaos? Well, they're testing cards. So they'll, they'll get a database of stolen credit cards, you know, from some hack site or wherever they bought it on the dark web, whatever. Um, they're testing to see which card numbers are valid on a smaller purchase um, so two ninety nine does that sort of fit in some exactly. sort of area of it's something but it's not nothing it looks like right. it could be legit so right, it, right yeah so if it works on two ninety nine is it going to work on two thousand nine hundred and ninety nine on a, a really expensive camera that they can then buy and then sell um, so so it's just they're testing the card to see if it's valid because they want to be able to buy goods that they can then resell. Um, and that's how these criminals make money. Um, there's a new service from Cloudflare called Turnstile. And I don't know if yes. Elliot's still still in the chat, but he's got a plugin that brings Turnstile into WordPress. And I haven't tested it or anything, but um, I'm really it's a, it's an alternative to reCAPTCHA. And I'm really interested to see if Turnstile is more effective at at stopping these types of things. Um, I'm very I don't know. I'm throwing it out there. Somebody test yeah. it. Let me know how it works. Elliot, Elliot was mentioned. We mentioned it on the show a couple of weeks ago, and he was in the comments. He's uh, yeah, it's a free plugin. He says it'll always be free. Oh yeah, he says yes, he's here. Uh, he he says it'll always be free, and and it works with a whole slew of things already. Um, I don't know if Elliot's got a Patreon or anything like that where he wants to you know take donations to to have it do more in the future, obviously the time and investment. But it works with all sorts of plug-in uh, solutions for forms and WooCommerce and all those kind of things. So, uh, Elliot, have you got any thoughts on whether or not it is actually more successful in blocking this stuff? Cloudflare, not Cloudflare, Stripe themselves have a technology which I believe is called Radar, which is kind of like their advanced fraud spotting technology. And uh, the article makes the point that up until last year, that technology was free. You could just deploy it anywhere for nothing, whereas now there's a cost associated with it. But um, yeah, so I don't know if your banks in the US work like this, but about a year and a half ago, um, now pretty much every transaction that I do online they it, so you put the transaction through and then a message comes up on the screen and it says where you've got to click something on your banking app 
to make the transaction actually take place. So, you know, a bit like when you log into Google or something, if you've logged in, if, if you're in a new browser, you've never logged into Google, it says, go to your mobile phone and click yes. And then we're going to show you three numbers. Pick one of those number that matches the one that we're showing you on the screen. That's now what banks here do for more or less every transaction because they realize the friction to that is so low. Yeah, that's called 3D Secure 2. Yeah. And yeah, it's become required in a bunch of countries. Yep. Yep. I would imagine it's required here because even the most trivial of things I, st I have to do it for. In, in physical locations, obviously for obvious reasons, they must have been through that and, you know, they can decline to to put that on because there you are. They've probably got you on CCTV and all of that kind of thing. But anything which is done over the internet, even if it's a teeny tiny amount of money, you have to go and click that button and say, you know, on my bank, I use a bank called Starling, up it pops. It completely takes over the phone. So it doesn't matter what you're doing. If you're reading your email, it just takes over the phone because it knows this is the most important thing that's about to happen. And you either click yes or you click no. And in that way, you can make things come or go. It feels like that's the, that's the perfect solution to this, maybe. I don't know. You know, um, the one thing about something that Zach said there, the, if, before you can dispute something, this is how it's supposed to work with Visa, MasterCard, American Express. Before you dispute something, you have to have made an attempt to reach out to the vendor and get a refund. And then if you're unhappy with the vendor's solution to that problem, then you have the dispute as an option. A lot of people jump right to the dispute. And so that brings back a charge. And $15 is a good charge. I've seen it up to $30, $40 so, uh, with different uh, processors. But before you're hit with that charge, you're supposed to be given, you're, you're required to be given the op opportunity to, re to uh, fix that on your own. So if, you're get if I was getting a thousand some charges like that, a thousand some dispute charges, I'm having a serious problem with the um, with the uh, with Visa, Mastercard, slash American Express for putting them through and not requiring them to reach out to me. If it's just one, I'm probably not going to complain that much because it's probably not worth the hassle. Mm -hmm. If it gets into thousands of dollars a month, yeah. Um, a couple of comments have come in. Um, uh... Rob Cairns says um, he, oh, sorry, Rob, I've clicked on the, the comment. The first one's wrong. Uh, so dealing with uh, Elliot's form, he says, Rob Cairns says that he's testing Turnstile with WS Form. Yeah, we have Mark Westgard on the show quite a lot, and he's the creator of WS Form. He built in uh, compatibility with Turnstile weeks ago. In fact, that was the first time I'd ever heard of it. So you can use it on there for free. Although Elliot's plugin, I believe, also covers WS Form. I could be wrong. Um, da, 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 da. And the banking system in Canada, at least in Rob's experience, doesn't work that way yet. Yeah, I remember seeing it for the first time and actually being a bit bowled over by it and thinking, is that fraud? Just thinking, why is my bank suddenly stick up, an, up a notification? That seems weird. And then because it's now completely, you know, it's the way you have to do absolutely everything, then now I'm completely used to it. Uh, okay, and Elliot's back saying, um, I'm using it on a bunch of sites and it seems to be working great so far. Okay, thank you for making the time to do it. Yeah, okay, great. It brings well, up I hope it's not. Point. Go on, Nev. Oh, I was just, it brings up an interesting point. Like, so... Like you put a step in the middle of the transaction and do people then uh, back out of transactions? You know, it's like everything is timed. You know, everything has like three seconds long run of site, you're in blue sales, all these kind of things. So is the cost of these fraudulent transactions worth like the cost of, of the time is going to take and the extra steps is going to take making you verify that transaction? At, one, at what point do you have a swap off on that? Do you know, it's interesting because my behavior has modified. So I very often have no idea where my phone is. That That's just typical of me. I'm fairly forgetful. I put the phone down and then I go and just do other stuff. And then, you know, you know that thing where you ask somebody else in the house, can you just phone my phone? And then it's like, where is it? <laughs> Everybody go hunt the phone. Well, now if I'm doing any kind of e-commerce transaction, I've now become habituated to have the phone next to me 
when I click buy now. And it, it didn't happen by design. It's just become part of my head. I, I just think there's no point in clicking buy now because I know I'm just going to have this mad hunt for my phone. So I hunt for the phone first, get the phone, and then click buy now. So yes, but I get the point. You know, any impediment to making a sale, but it, yeah, because I just see it as that's helpful. I see that as a really helpful oh, piece I, of technology. It's really helpful, yeah. yeah. Mm. It's, it's like, I, yeah, I think it's really helpful, but it's, some, it's like, why does the... Why does the grocery store have the milk and the stuff in a in a cooler that doesn't have a door on it? Because they'll sell, yeah. if they put a door on it, they're going to sell less. Yeah. So it's worth yeah. it for them to you know call the whole store to sell more milk. Yes, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Yeah, um, just I, d I don't know if the UK is a strange example, but um, yeah, th those little sort of terminal type transactions—they're now absolutely everywhere. Um, a year ago, literally 12 months ago, it was fairly uncommon to be able to pay on the phone. You know, you'd have to ask that question, can I pay on the phone? Now, I would say that 99.9% .9 of um, bricks and mortar places have it. And I was walking in town not that long ago where I live. The Bosca, the guy playing the guitar, had a terminal so that you could <laughs> so you didn't even have to flick a coin at him. It was like you could just... There was a sign that he'd got pointing to his terminal and you could go and choose an amount and doot with your phone. I just thought, we've come a long way, haven't we? We've come. A poor guy's got to pay tax on it, though, sadly. <laughs> but there you go. Okie doke, yeah. Um, yeah, let's have a look. Rob Cairns. No, we'll leave that comment there. Okay, let's move on. A couple of events to mention. We love mentioning events. There's a couple going on this week. Um, the first one, these are both meetup events. This one's hosted by Wes Theron. Um, let me see if I can make that message go away. There we go. This is the first one that we're mentioning. It's called Using the Navigation Block. And this event, which is happening November the 14th, so it's later today, says 9 p.m. GMT. So you've got a few hours if you want to sign up for this. Uh, it's at, it's at meetup.com. Just go search for Using the Navigation Block. And it says, let's explore how the navigation, how to use the navigation block together. Um, the navigation block is a new advanced block that enables you to edit your site's menu, both in terms of structure and design. I've got to say, it's a fairly confusing interface for complete novices to WordPress. So if that's you, go and check it out. It'll probably be available after the fact. And another one. Uh, let me make that go away as well. I confess I didn't see the first part of this, but this is Jonathan Bossinger. He's been on the show before. Um, and it's his second part. If you're into blocks, but you don't want to learn React, um, then this might be of use. WordPress development live stream, developing blocks without React, part two. And I genuinely don't know how he's going to do that without React. So that could be a really, really interesting one as well. Anything to say about that? If not, we'll move on. Okie doke, we will in that case move on. Okay, right. I'd, I'd, let's hope. Let's hope Sabrina takes this in the uh, in the way it in which it is meant. Sabrina uh, Zidane. I don't know if you know Sabrina. She's um, she's a WordPress developer. She's been on this show quite a lot of times, and we did a little series together. And she is hoping to go to WordCamp Europe this year. And she put out a tweet which has been consumed by my Mastodon feed. Um, and it says, last year I was leading WordCamp Europe uh, content team, and I'm honored to do so again for WordCamp Europe 2023 in Athens. I am looking for sponsorship or a grant, if you will. Uh, do you happen to know a company that might want to support my work as an EU organizer? Tag them, please. Um, let me show you what it looks like on Twitter. So Sabrina's handle is at Sabrina underscore Zidane, which is Z-E-I-D-A-N, at Sabrina underscore Zidane. And uh, if you work for a company that have these philanthropic arms and want to put some money in the pot to get Sabrina there, I'm sure she'd be, well, enormously grateful. So, uh, yeah, I just thought we'd raise that. Have any of you guys going to WordCamp Europe this year? Or... Is anybody going, I don't mean this year, I mean next year, or is, are any of you guys going to WordCamp 
Asia. It's about the most exciting thing that's happened in the WordPress space in years. WordCamp in Asia, go on. Anybody going? No, I am not going to Asia, although we have a few of our team members that are in Asia that'll be there. So that's exciting. Good. I have to have ask, a... how does that selection process work? And is there fighting? <laughs> <laughs> in that particular instance, they were already yeah. going. You know, they're they're in the region and they were oh, very excited nice. to have a word camp. So yeah. Uh, yeah. more of an individual thing. I, I'm really, I, I would love to go. I mean, I, I don't suppose for a moment that I will be going, but I would really love to go just to uh, just to see what it's, what the WordCamp scene would be like in that part of the world. I'm sure the, the, the makeup of the audience will be really interesting, different, a whole bunch of new people to meet. And um, yeah, and just getting to, getting to see a bit of Thailand and Bangkok would be kind of nice. You shook your head, Kathy, you're not going. What about you, Never? Are you going? I, I'm not going, but uh, I will make a comment on Sabrina, though. I think she is an amazing person that really would deserve this. She's like, uh, she lives in Ukraine. And when all this started happening with Ukraine, she had, she had to move away from the country while she was organizing WordCamp EU. And uh, I don't know who was at WordCamp EU, but that was a phenomenal event. And it wasn't just her planning it, but you know, the, the, her ability to like execute at such a high level with her whole world falling apart. Hell, I'm going to hang now and I, and, and I can't work that day, you know, yeah. and she, um, uh, yeah, so I think she's well worth a sponsorship. Oh, that's so kind. So just contact Sabrina directly if you've got the capacity to do that. I'm sure she'd be grateful of any bits and pieces. Um, yeah, I think a worthy, a worthy person. That would be really, really nice. Uh, I'm going to mention this article, and unless one of you has the the technical expertise to explain it carefully and thoughtfully, I'm just literally going to mention it and then move away from it. It's um, it's by Justin Tadlock, and it's over on Gutenberg Times. It seems to be where uh, he's comfortable writing nowadays. You'll probably remember he did years over at WP Tavern where he he belted out content you know, like a open faucet. It was absolutely absurd. And, um, and now he's, uh, he's working with automatic and still wishing to write. So I've seen a couple of pieces of his over on the Gutenberg times. It's called a walkthrough of layout classes in WordPress 6.1. And if this is this subject interests you, you're keeping an eye on all of the different changes that WordPress 6.1 has brought to the table. I could get boring and a bit nerdy. I won't bother, but I'm just sort of giving him a, a hat. A hat's tip to say, go and check out that article. I'll link to it uh, in the show notes. Right. Anybody want to mention that or shall I move on? Okay, I've got a couple of deals that I want to mention this week. Um, if you're a, well, I'm guessing most of you have got squirreled away an Adobe license of one type or another. I stopped using Adobe's products, oh, I don't know, maybe five years ago or something like that. I came across this suite called Affinity. You ever heard of Affinity? Any of you, you ever used their suite? Okay, no. just stop what you're doing. Um, if, you, if you're working with a team, you know, and everybody's on Adobe, don't bother. But if you have, um, if you are just doing things that you can manage in-house, or, you know, there's only a small team. There's three products. They're called Affinity Designer, Affinity Photo, and Affinity Publisher. And I dare say they do 99% of everything that you would get from, uh, you know, the, the equivalent tools on the, the creative, what's it called? Creative Cloud or something? The Adobe Creative yeah. Cloud? The, the nice thing here is they're fully mature, right? The, it, this is not sort of fly-by-night software. They've, they've been around for a long time. They do all the things, but the, the, the payment model is totally different. You basically pay one time, and then you've got it until the next major upgrade. Well, considering I've been using them for about five years, uh, we've been on V1, although it was never called V1. I didn't know there was a V2 even in the, even in the offing. Um, I, I paid, I don't know, $29 or something for each of those tools. Uh, and I can use them on Mac. I can use them on Windows. And I can use them on iOS. You get all the platforms. You don't pay for an iOS license separately. It's the whole thing. Uh, and at the minute, it's 
pounds, so let's say it's $89, it's probably very similar, um, if you want to buy all of them because they're sort of celebrating their rollout. I guess maybe it's a Black Friday type of thing. I'm not really sure. But, uh, yeah, totally worth checking out. Um, and there you go. Rob Cairns, he's backing me up. It's an amazing deal. The iPad. Yeah, I don't have an iPad, so I'm not really, not really sure how good that deal is actually would be for the iPad, but for the other bits and pieces, it's really great. No, no, no takers on this show, it doesn't look like. Nobody's using Affinity. Nobody's going to try the changeover. <laughs> I might be curious. I, I, I don't love paying the Adobe prices. I don't, I don't do a ton with photo. Thankfully, I have a very talented design team that, <laughs> that works with us that makes that a whole lot easier. Um, but, uh, you know, this looks like a great deal. Oh, and the, the nice thing is, I, th I feel like at this pricing, for a, a design team, it would be really fairly affordable to get the whole team on it, banking on the fact that, you know, you might get four or five years worth of um, uh, of updates out of it. And the it looks like the V1 version is still getting updated anyway. So even though they've just launched V2, the V1 version got some updates just the other day. I don't know if it was to, maybe the update was just to stick the ads in <laughs> for the for the V2 version. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, totally worth checking out. Uh, so Jeff, hello, Jeff. I'm not sure we've had Jeff before. Jeff win one. I use Affinity myself. It's an outstanding deal. Some of the reviews I've read say it's better than Photoshop. Yeah, I can't really speak to that because I had a Photoshop license. And do you know that feeling when you just, you know that it, it could do a billion things and you only need it for one. That was kind of me. <laughs> it was like, remove the background. Okay, and then remove the background and then remove the background. And that's basically what I did. It does all of that good stuff. So, yeah, totally worth checking out. Hello, Ben. Nice to have you with us. Ben's the, uh, Ben's the lead developer over at Stackable. Hi, Ben. How are you doing? Okay, that's one deal. And then the final thing that I've got today, so we'll probably end up having a fairly short show this time around, is if you use, do you like Grammarly? Anybody use Grammarly? Then yeah, love can it. I, yeah, okay. So here's me trying to upset the Apple cart again. Uh, first of all, I'm trying to get you away from Adobe's products. Now I'm trying to get you away from Grammarly. Uh, let me just pop it on the screen. This one is called, ooh, come on. This one's arrival called Pro Writing Aid. And as I've I had Grammarly for ages, then I discovered Pro Writing Aid. I found that I could pay uh, a lifetime deal for it, so that's what I did. And they have brought back their lifetime deal uh, again, just for now. I guess it's a Black Right Friday kind of thing. Um, it it appears that they pay one hundred ninety nine pounds fifty, so let's call it two hundred dollars. It'll be something like that. And you get the full tool. And as far as I can tell, it does absolutely everything that Grammarly does equally well. You know, it's everywhere. Uh, in the browser, it works particularly well with a Chrome extension or a whatever browser you're using type of extension. They've got a beta version of the Mac Everywhere app. They've got a Windows equivalent. And it really does. It just follows you around everywhere and and helpfully suggest things you can give it sort of writing style like i don't know i want to be salesy today and i want to be a bit more professional this day and it'll you know tweak it all and figure out all the bits and pieces so yeah 200 bucks for uh pro writing aid if you fancy having a look at that i wonder if i can get anybody to uh to move over to pro writing aid yeah dennis is saying he loves grammarly <laughs> i think you got me <laughs> well, yeah, the price is real tempting. I love the idea of being able to get a lifetime payment deal is Grammarly yeah. not cheap. Yeah. So the, I mean, it really does work everywhere. Plus, they've got something equivalent to Google Docs. If you want to do your write, I don't know if Grammarly has this. They they didn't when I was using it. If you want to do your writing in their tool, you can have an, a, like a Google Docs interface. It integrates perfectly with you know everything. If there's a text area on your website, it sort of steps in and interrupts you. You can obviously turn it off or turn it on and what have you, but it's, yeah, it's great. So this is pro writing aid. Let me just put it back on the screen. 50% off, looks like you got 14 days. So by my reckoning, I've probably saved everybody about $300 just now. <laughs> so go and get Affinity, whatever, all the design I, tools. And I actually really aid. like that they have their own writing tool because I 
just from privacy, and I stopped using Grammarly because of privacy concerns. Like I don't want what I'm writing in Google Docs or in my email to go to some other place. So I like to have things sort of segmented out. So the fact that they have their own writing tool, and that would help me support what I'm saying in that tool that I could then copy paste into my other tools and keep, you know, kind of the salty food on one side and the sweet food on the other. I kind of like that idea. Yeah, let me just see if I can get it um, get it up on the screen. I'm having a real difficulty. I'm guessing it's at prowritingaid.com. I'm trying to see if I can actually log in and show you what it looks like. Let's see if this will work. Da, da, da. It says my username is wrong. That's typical. Sorry, you carry on talking, Nev. It sounded like you wanted to. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I think uh, you, you made a, uh, an excellent financial argument for listening to the show. Because in, if you <laughs> First you, time ever. Yeah. <laughs> what else are you going to do today to make $350 an hour? This is the most right. profitable hour of the day. <laughs> so let me see. Okay, so here you go. So I, uh, I'll just start an untitled report, and I'll show you on the screen, give you an idea of how it works. So bear in mind, this is not how you would typically interact with it. Typically, it's, it's, it's working in WordPress on each of the paragraph blocks or whatever it is that you might be working in. And if I just, I'll just delete that text. It was about a podcast that I was doing the other day. So this is the tool. Um, and you can see that you have the option to, you know, you can change the different sort of style of your writing. Um, you can have a thesaurus embedded over the top. It will check for sort of overused words if you're being lazy with different kind of words and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. Um, da, 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 da. You can alter the structure, the length, the transition, the readability. I don't know what that means. The, the stickiness of it shows sentences in your writing which are sticky or otherwise. Uh, if you've overused cliches, if your diction isn't quite on, if you've got pronouns which you've, you know, you've accidentally slipped up with, um, alliteration, and then a whole load of other things. Homonyms, consistency, acronyms, dialogue, pacing, sensory, house, and plagiarism tools, they're all built in. And, and this, this is just the tool that you use online. So there you go. Go get it. That's all I'm saying. Right. I think that's all I've got to say this week. Unless anybody else had something in the show notes that they wanted to add, we'll call it a day. We're having an early finish. We normally finish about half an hour later than today. But anything that you put in the show notes that I missed, Kathy or Nev or Zach? We're all good. Okay. In which case, it, it's time, the time has arrived for the humiliation, I'm afraid. Uh, each, <laughs> each week, I do a little thing where, do you, would you mind, would everybody just give us a wave? We do this and we try to get everybody to, yeah, look at that. We do it all at the same time. Perfect. Thank you very, very much indeed. Um, we'll be back next week. I've forgotten who's going to be on the show, but for this week, I'm going to make a big thank you to Kathy. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. This You're welcome. Fun. Yeah. And to Nev, thank you very much. Well, great to be here. Thank you. And to Zach also. Thanks very much for joining us this week. We'll be back, like I said, next week. And you guys, hopefully, you'll come on another time. That would be really great. Have a good day. Bye.